Uh, my next guest, a political outsider, burst onto the scene last year with a plan to splash, uh, and, I mean, slash rather, the federal bureaucracy, drain the swamp. Now he's endorsed Donald Trump for president. Joining us now with more, former 2024 presidential candidate, candidate Vivek Ramaswamy. You know, last time you were on this show, you got pretty pissed off at me. Are you still mad at me, or are we, are we back being friends again? We buried that hatchet, Sean, and I think it's a good thing in our movement for us to be able to disagree respectfully and have good debate. And I think that's what we had last time. Oh, so I think I you. I actually ways. think. Yeah, I think you thrive on it. I haven't watched you in this campaign. I think you thrive on it. You live for it. You get energized by it. I think that's your personality. Um, you got out it of. Is. You got out of the race after Iowa. You've now appeared on stage with Donald Trump, um, and. It was getting a little heated between both of you also at the end of that, that campaign. Um, you don't think that either Nikki Haley or Governor DeSantis should stay in. Why? Look, at this point, I think it was fair to run this all the way through Iowa, but the people spoke loudly and decisively. And I do see an opportunity here, Sean. I know a lot of people might laugh at this idea. But I see an opportunity to reunite the country, and that starts with reuniting our Republican Party. So running it through Iowa was fair game. I got about 8% support. I think I was about to get something similar in New Hampshire. I think it was better to give Trump a decisive victory, and I would ask for everybody who was considering supporting me in New Hampshire, libertarians included, to go in Trump's direction, end this primary, and then let's focus on taking the America First agenda to the next level. And I think we're going to do that best by actually first reuniting our party, then reuniting this country. And I do think that Donald Trump, you know, I'm, I'm clearly, this is why I endorsed him, but I do think he is... The best choice left in this, I think it needs to be an America first president. I think the America first movement reaches beyond the traditional boundaries of the Republican Party. So I'm focused on bringing the next generation along with us for my part, Sean. Listen, we I had a I, lot of people, I young people who are looking message. for direction well, and sir, we can bring them. I, I think certainly after New Hampshire on Tuesday, certainly after South Carolina, I think there's a lot on the line for Nikki Haley in, in both those states. Uh, if, if Donald Trump, if the polls hold and he wins New Hampshire and he's leading by a significant amount in South Carolina, I'm not sure what her path would be towards the nomination. The earlier the Republicans unite, I think the better. I don't like New Hampshire's system uh, with an open primary where Democrats can change their party affiliation up to pretty much the last minute and then, you know, wreak havoc in a Republican primary. That's been happening. Thousands of Democrats have re-registered as either independents or as Republicans just so they can vote in a Republican primary. That concerns me a little bit. Your thoughts on that? Well, one thing is I think we should stand against all forms of election interference in the GOP primary, Sean. So whether that's Maine or Colorado, one of the things that I said was that I would voluntarily have removed myself from the ballots in Maine and Colorado if they forcibly removed Trump. I think the right answer for both Haley and DeSantis would have been to say the same thing. Anytime there's outside election interference from the other side in a GOP primary, I think we should be united in standing against it. Yeah. And the fact that we're not, I think, represents a bit of a problem. And so for a lot of reasons, I think after New Hampshire, I would say even before New Hampshire, the right yeah. step is for Haley DeSantis to drop out Let's unite behind Donald Trump and then make this not just a Republican Party's movement. Make an America First movement that is bigger than one man and bigger than one party, bringing the next generation along with us. And the earlier that starts this year, the Listen, better that is going to be for our movement and our country. And that's where I stand. The, the agenda is simple. You control the borders. We become energy dominant, not just independent, but dominant. Yep. We, we sell these re resources. Then we can cut taxes. Then we can start paying down the $40 trillion in debt. And in terms yes. of foreign policy, I agree with you, a lot of your points. I don't want Americans involved in endless wars. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I feel Joe Biden has just botched the, the whole Ukraine effort uh, by putting handcuffs from the beginning on Zelensky. I do want to see Israel win their war against terror because the Islamic radical terrorists that attacked them on October 7th want to attack us. I think the world has to at some point deal with Iran. And that's where I wanted to specifically ask you, what do you do with the number one state sponsor of terror? They wouldn't be Houthi rebels armed as well as they are without the Iranians. The same with Hamas, the same with Hezbollah, uh, the same with a lot of these groups. 
A lot of this goes right to the mullahs in Iran. Should the world unite and make sure that they never get nuclear weapons, and should they take out their refineries, which is their ability to make money to foment terror? So I'll say three things there, Sean. First, on the point on Israel, Israel is now proving it is able to get its job done. The number one thing we need to do is provide the diplomatic support that allows them to get their job done without having to actually be half in, half out, which I think is worse for Israel and worse for the United States. And you have Biden now second-guessing their decisions. They don't need a backseat quarterback or an armchair quarterback. That's not what they need. And so as we now move to the Houthis, what I would say is my rule of thumb when it comes to foreign policy is if you hit us, whichever group it is that hits us, we hit you back 10 times harder. That has to be the rule. It's what I would tell my son if he's being bullied in school. It's the same principle in human nature as in foreign policy. If somebody hits you, hit that group back 10 times harder. Is it in the world's interest, in the U.S.'s interest, to make sure Iran never becomes nuclear equipped? Absolutely. And I think whether it's Saudi Arabia or Iran, we should make sure that we stop nuclear proliferation in the Middle East. I do think it was a mistake for the U.S. to engage in discussions about nuclear technology transfer to Saudi Arabia last year. That's something that was under-discussed. But keeping nukes out of Iran's hands, absolutely a vital priority. Where I am different than the Lindsey Grahams or others in the Republican Party is I don't believe a preemptive strike on Iran is a good idea. To the contrary, I think we can deal with, I think, a lot of these threats diplomatically through smart use of our economic fortitude, become, as you said, energy dominant again. We need to become a net exporter of energy, which takes the legs out of leverage from our enemies on the global stage. That's the right focus. And so that's where America I'm not first sure policy, that's work, though. There, I think, is the right way forward. There are reports that Iran could be just a month, two months, three months away from a nuclear weapon. And, and marrying that to their radical ideology and their fomenting of terror, um, they would be the people that would do it, in my view. Scary scenario. Let me ask you this. You supported well, President Trump. Yeah. Uh, the president has talked about you maybe joining his administration if he's elected. Uh, any particular job that you would want. So, Sean, the truth is, I'm in this for the country. There's a lot of ways to drive change in this country, inside and outside government. For the last few years, I've been doing it through the market. I started Strive to compete direct directly against BlackRock and State Street and Vanguard. That's what I was doing for the couple of years before I ran for U.S. president for the year running into it. And so I, I'm all in for the country. And right now, my focus is making sure that we do elect Donald Trump as the next president of the United States. It's not even about me. It's not about Trump. It's not about one man. It's about this country. So that's what I'm most focused on. And whatever it is for the country, I'm all in to do the right thing. Well, uh, listen, you got to get a lot of credit. You ran hard. You came out of nowhere. Uh, you got a lot of attention. You made a lot of people mad, which was interesting to me. Um, and I, I can sense that your passion is real. I don't, I don't, I don't think you can fake that. And it'll be interesting to see what your future is in the world of politics. Obviously, you're very young, and I'm sure we'll be talking uh, many times in the future. We appreciate you being back. Thank you. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.